Hey guys, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about the eighth book in the Pendragon Adventure series. It is called The Pilgrims of Ryan. Ryan. I think that's how it's pronounced. I suck at pronouncing these territory names. So we start this book with Courtney and Bobby going to Third Earth to try and figure out what changed the future. What has changed in the past that caused Second Earth and as we find out, once they get there, Third Earth to change so drastically. So, with the help of Patrick, the traveler of Third Earth, they managed to find out that Mark went to First Earth and introduced this project that him and Andy Mitchell, aka St. Dane, were working on. And basically, it screws, it sets like computer science ahead much further than it should be. Because as we remember, First Earth is 1937, I think. So this technology is super, super advanced for that time and just, it's gonna fuck up the stream of time on the Earth territories. Barbie, Bobby and Courtney go to First Earth to try and see if they can find and stop Mark and get the stream of time righted. They run into St. Dane and St. Dane, you know, of course, is giving off all this information like most villains do. So Bobby decides, okay, Courtney, I'm gonna leave you here on First Earth. You try and find and stop Mark. I gotta go to this territory that St. Jane just went to. And this territory, I think, is pronounced Mbara. So Bobby goes there. We find out that the Quigs in that territory are bees. And Bobby is basically attacked by a swarm of them. So he passes out the moment he gets out of the flume. And he is found by this woman named Telio? 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 And she nurses Bobby back to help. So the people of Ryan are not too happy with this outsider showing up by their village. So they take him to their leader's the tribunal. And Bobby, thinking fast, pretends he has amnesia. And basically says, I only remember two things. I think they're names. One of them is Pendragon. I think that's my name, or maybe it's the other one. And then he says the name of the traveler from Imbara, who he never met, but he knows of from Quillian. And the tribunal is like shocked because apparently this traveler was part of their tribunal. So they're like, okay, let's keep this guy around in hopes that he gets his memory back and tell us what happened to our fellow tribunal member. And we quickly meet the new traveler of Imbara, whose name is Siri. So Bobby's like, shit, this kid, this troublemaking kid, because Siri is a thief, and the tribunal basically give him a choice. You could be scheduled for a year of hard labor with the fishing boats, or you can basically babysit this Pendragon guy. Siri picks the better of the two options and chooses to watch Bobby. So Bobby finds out that Siri is part of this like ragtag band of kids called the Jackals. And they are questioning this like wonderful peaceful village of theirs. They actually reveal that this Embara is an island, or at least the part of Embara they are on is an island. They're curious. They know nothing about their history, how they get there, who are they, and they want to know more, but the tribunal won't tell them more. Anyone who apparently questions this, it disappears. So they want to know what the hell is up. So Bobby feels maybe these guys are part of the turning point of this territory, so let's stick by them. And Siri here, he knows about all the traveler business his father told him, but he doesn't believe any of that. They were just stories to him growing up. So the jackals, in an attempt to try and find out more about themselves, are planning to take this boat that the tribunal is keeping hidden from the rest of the village and sail. They have this map and they know where the closest landmass is, so they want to sail there and try and find answers. And lo and behold, as they're leaving, there's this big like invasion of these other group of people called flighters. Flighters are bad. They are like not pirates, but they try and attack the village, try and get supplies from them and all that. Now, there's going to be spoilers here now, guys, so if you don't want spoilers, I suggest you click away now and come back after you finish reading the book. They find the nearest landmass, and it's basically, what they find is a totally destroyed, abandoned city. And then something that one of the jackals says kind of 
makes Bobby panic because they're like, hey guys, let's, okay, let's go back to Embarra and get supplies and then we can come back and explore this more. And Bobby's like, what do you say? And they're, then they're like, well, we're going to go back. And she's like, no, what exactly did you say? And they're just like, are you going crazy? I said, let's go back to Embarra. And Bobby's like, I thought the village with name was Ryan, which it was. And they're like, that's the village. The island is called Embarra. So Bobby's like freaked out, being all like, what's the name of the world? What's the name of everything else? What is the name of this planet? Whatever, just answer me. And they say the unexpected. The rest... Outside of the island, everything is called Velox. So that was a huge, oh shit, moment. Apparently, Embara is in Velox's future, much like how the three Earth territories are on the same timeline. So apparently, things for Velox did not go well. We find out that Asia, Killian, the traveler of Velox, came up with this brilliant plan once Lifelight really started to fade. She planned to have about 40 or so faders, vetters, and a few people who came out of Life Flight go to Embara and try and start anew. The big plan was have like very little to no technology so they aren't tempted like they were with Life Flight. And that island is the best choice for them because it's far enough away to keep them isolated. But since Embara was an old military base, there was weaponry there, so if they need it, they can use it to defend themselves. So as the generations passed, only the tribunal learned of like the past of Velox and everything. They kept everything else a secret from the rest of the people of Mimbara. And their plan was, once a certain time came, they would send pilgrims out to try and resettle the rest of Velox. So we find out that this is the turning point of Mimbara. The whole pilgrims being sent out. And just there's this huge battle, St. Dane is mixing the territories more, and he brought Dados from Quillen to Embara and is planning to use them to totally wipe out the people of the island. So Bobby's like, you know what, screw following the rules. He goes back to Velox in the, in the time of Asia, tries to warn her and get her away, because we found out Asia is assassinated before she can even go to Embara. The plans were set in motion, but she was never able to see it happen. So she refuses to leave Velox because she's like, no, if I die, that's the way it was meant to be. They go to Dignoron to get Tack to like use against the Dados because the Dados are robots. They aren't going to be phased by much else. At the end of the huge war, the Dados were totally defeated. So Bobby is trying to like get rid of all the territory, all the territory things that he mixed. He sends Ciri and Alder, who comes from Denoron, to help with the war. He sends them away to try and return things, and in while they're gone, Bobby blows up the flume in Amara, thus trapping himself and St. Dane there. It's intense, and it's just... holy crap. At the same time, I think Bobby's being kind of selfish there, because he's just like, I'm done with this. I'm done with the traveler shit. I'm done. Now, switching back to... Mark and Courtney. Courtney finds Mark with the help of Gunny's acolyte, whose name is Dodger, and they try and convince him to destroy Forge, but he doesn't want to because he's convinced that Forge is what saved his parents from dying in that plane crash they'd gone into back on Second Earth. And lo and behold, they were alive the moment he signed the contract and stuff to sell Forge. But we also find out later on, when things are getting intense, that it wasn't Forge that actually saved his parents. It was Neva. Before they got into the plane to go to Orlando, she stopped. So, Mark's invention didn't save them. So he basically brought his technology back to First Earth and fucked up the space-time continuum and whatnot for no reason. So, with that in mind, he destroys Forge in hopes that this will totally right all the futuristic stuff. So guys, things is get things are getting really, really intense now where we only have two books to go and I have a feeling they're gonna be very action packed and I can't wait to read them all. So that is it for this week's book review and I will see you guys next time. See ya.